Hello and um, welcome to our second uh, webinar uh, where we will go a little deeper into uh, the particular configurations of the recorder and player um, and also look at how to display videos properly when you get in videos of this different aspect ratios. Um, as last time, please let me know via chat if there are some questions or technical difficulties like um, you can't hear me or something. Um, so please let me know so um, I can adjust. Um, yeah, so let's quickly uh, do some sort of recap um, and then go from there. Um, so Zigio is an API for video recording and playback and it allows you to embed a video recorder into your website and app, um, as well as a player. So in order to get started, you basically create an account, um, which will lead you to a page that looks like this, and there you have an application, which is um, like your a folder for videos. Um, and this every application has a, an application token that identifies your application uniquely. Um, and we will use that to build our first website and to use that application. Um, if you click on the link um, to see how it integrates, you will end up here, which will give you um, some code that you just copy and paste into your website. And that basically loads the Zigio software into your website and also um, uses your application token to bind it uniquely to your own, um, yeah, to your account. So for building the website, I have a very basic editor here and I created a page, um, almost nothing in there. I'm including jQuery here just to make the demo easier, um, but it's not required for Zigio to work. It's just to make the demo a little easier to read. So I copy and paste um, this code here into the website like this. And whenever you want to test Zigio locally on your computer, you need to run a web server. Um, so if I fire this up in the browser, um, I have a web server running now on localhost 8080. Um, and the reason is that browsers don't allow access to the camera if, um, if it's not run on a web server. So if you just open an HTML file, um, it will not work. Um, but running a web server locally is very easy. So what I'm usually doing if I want to have an ad hoc server is to use PHP. And this single line here starts a simple web server in a particular directory. So the index HTML that I'm using here is in that directory that serves it up on that port. Obviously, you can also have more fancy setups for a web server. Now, the very basic thing is to um, include a recorder. Uh, let's do that here. Um, so I'm just writing Zigio recorder. I'm selecting a particular theme. We'll get into that. And I'm selecting a particular size as well, um, just to get something going. Um, let's do this. All right. Now, if we refresh, this should show me a recorder. Um, let's do a little test recording. So I click test here. You should be able to see me now. Uh, let's do a recording. Um, <clears throat> hey, uh, this is Oliver doing the first test recording for today for the screencast. It's uploading and then this video will end up um, in your Zigio dashboard. Um, which should be here. So if you go into videos here, here's our first video that we've just recorded. You can see it here. We can also watch it here if you want to, um, but that's fine for now. Um, okay, and now that we have that video, it gets um, this so-called token, which is a unique identifier for that video. So we can copy that one and paste it into the website um, just to see the player for that video. So for that, we just write Zigio player 
and we can mostly just copy and paste this configuration if we want it to look similar. So why don't we do that? And then we specify the particular video here. Um, now let's have a look. If we go back to the page and refresh, and here's our recorder, and here's the player for the video we just recorded. So this is the basic recap um, for the most basic use of Sigio. Um, now, in terms of customization, um, let's comment this out for now. Oops. Um, so as you probably seen here, I selected a theme here, and we have different types of themes. So there's, for instance, also um, a theme called cube or a theme called space, for instance. Let's just have a look what that means. So if you refresh here, um, now this looks a little different. If you click here, you'll also see that the controls kind of look different. Um, I think we have six or seven themes that you can select and you can find the theme category on our website. And then next to the themes is a theme coloring that you can select. So if you say theme color, for instance, red, um, and then refresh, and this will be in a like reddish uh, color. Um, and we have green and blue, I think, as well as overrides here. And you can obviously also create your own themes, which is basically um, writing your own CSS files for this. Um, and I will get into that in another webinar to where we create a theme from scratch. But you have um, a bunch of configuration options here um, to make the recorder look um, the way you like it to look. Now, for many applications, we don't want the user to um, to just record a video for for forever, basically. But we want to put time constraints on on video length. Um, yeah, particularly because that kind of leads to self editing. So people try to keep it nice and uh, concise. So the way to impose time limits um, is to use the time limit parameter. Um, it's in, in seconds. So for instance, if I write 15 here, um, this will impose a time limit of 15 seconds. So what that means is if we now do the recording to a second one and hit record, um, it will display a counter that is counting down now. So you can see that here before it was counting up, now it is counting down. And if I don't finish within 15 seconds, um, it would automatically cut me off, basically, um, which is nice if you want to get um, short videos. So this is the really basic configuration of the recorder. As a next step, I want to get into um, mobile recording on phones, and I use my iPhone here. And the first thing you need to know is um, how can you test um, an iPhone recording, uh, a phone recording locally. Um, because the URL that I have here that I'm using for testing is on local hosts, um, and this local host will not work on mobile. And often you want to test stuff without deploying it to any production setting. So the way I like to do that is putting the, um, the laptop here that runs the server, as well as the phone on the same Wi Fi um, that is already happening. And then you need to find out your IP address in um, the Wi-Fi to make it run on your phone. Um, so I'm showing you how I do that on a Mac, and it works the same way on Linux. On Windows, you probably have to go into your network settings. But on, um, on all Linux-based machines, you can basically write if config that shows a ton of stuff about um, my network. And then I'm particularly looking for an entry that says INET, um, which is an IP4 address, and I can see this is my IP on that Wi-Fi. So I'm copying this and, um, and um, yeah, create a new server um, that is bound to that IP. Um, looks like this. Hopefully it doesn't complain. And now I could go here and refresh. That should show me the same page, exactly. But it's now bound to um, the IP I have in the Wi-Fi. And I will do the same. Now I can go to that URL on my phone um, and refresh the page, and it should show me the exact same um, recorder. Uh, it's hard 
obviously hard for you to see that now um, <laughs> because I'm doing it on my phone. But I will do a quick test recording, um, mainly for the purpose to, um, to uh, get a video of a particular aspect ratio. Um, so this was like in portrait mode, which is a completely different aspect ratio than the one we recorded on desktop. Um, and um, then we will see how to display all of that nicely um, on in, in our browser. So let's go back to our dashboard um, and see if we can find that video. It's processing um, to the right formats. So let's see here. Yeah, so here's the third recording I just did it with my phone. And as you can see, this is a completely different layout than the other videos that we recorded previously. So now we want to see how we can show them nicely on a website um, because most probably your users will use any types of phones and configurations and so on. And you want to show them uniformly in a nice way. Okay, so let's build a quick video wall here and then try to make it look really nice with all these different aspect, aspect ratios. Um, so similar to um, one of the other demos I did, we'll create um, that wall here uh, automatically, basically. Um, so let's do this. So we use this operation um, to get a list of uh, videos. Um, so get a list of videos and we will display all of them. Um, so let's check first that this is working properly. Um, let's refresh the page. Look at the console. Yeah, this gives me an unauthorized. Um, so whenever we want to get a list of videos inside the browser, we have to go to the dashboard and enable that operation. Um, that's important for security purposes, basically. Um, so we go to the authorization settings, say client is allowed to perform the index operation, save. Now, if you go back here, um, this seems fine. And it returns a list of objects which are all the, which are the three video objects that we just created. Great. Now let's go back here. And for all these videos, we now dynamically um, create player code um, that attaches this to the website. So um, we iterate over all the videos and then we create basically the HTML code that we wrote above um, and add it to the body using jQuery. Right. As a template, I kind of just copy and paste um, what I have here in a simplified form. So let's keep the theme and let's remove this stuff. And instead of the particular video, we include the videos that we have here, which would be video token, I believe. Um, let's see what happens. Yeah, so now it includes all those videos. And as you can see, we have different aspect ratios here. Um, so that doesn't look too nicely. Um, and now the first trick that we can do um, is to pick a fixed size as we did before. So let's give it a try. So we say width is, for instance, 400 and height is 300. Um, so now you can see we have all those videos um, the same size and you can see that they're, they're not distorted although they have not exactly the aspect, aspect ratio that we show here. So the phone video is kind of cropped at the top and at the bottom here which makes it look nicer but I mean you if you particularly if you want your site to be responsive you probably don't want to um, to pick a particular width and a particular height uh, because you kind of want it to adjust really if I resize it here. You want the players to, to adjust to that. So why don't we um, create like a grid-like system where we display two videos next to each other um, 
and adjust automatically to whatever size the browser has um, and use CSS for that. So um, we get rid of this explicit width and height here um, and instead say Zigio stretch, which will now um, tell the system to automatically adjust the size of the player or embedding that works with the recorder too um, to the um, to the container, whatever container we have around that player. And we create a container now. Um, so let's call it container template here. Um, and just use a div here and we'll put the player template inside player. Oops. Player template. Um, yeah, and we'll use a CSS class here that we call container. Hope I'm not adding another typo. All right, container. Um, now we append the container to the body, and now we can write some CSS here. So we write a cla container class, and we say, for instance, since we want to have two boxes next to each other, we say width 50%. Um, and let's say so these boxes have a nice height. We can, for instance, see like a fixed height. We could also make that proportional, but I think that's that's a fair statement. Um, and then so the these divs are next to each other. We use the display property inline block. So if we do that, let's see what happens if you refresh here. All right, that's already better. So we can see they have all kind of the same size. And if I now resize the browser, um, these containers automatically resize as well, which is kind of neat. Um, and then to make it a little nicer, um, I would suggest that we add some padding, for instance. So we change the box sizing uh, to border box and add some padding, for instance, five pixels. Uh, if we now refresh, it should look fairly nice. Yeah. So now we have like a little frame around each video and it resizes perfectly um, on all browsers, basically, and all sizes. And obviously, if you want to get more fancy, um, you can now, depending on the display size, also say if it gets smaller, even smaller, like on mobile, it will only display one video per, um, per column, uh, per row, I mean and so on, um, similar to, to Bootstrap. Um, yeah, so that, that concludes um, this, this webinar. Um, so thank you for attending. Um, we'll publish the date of our next webinar soon, and the next webinar um, will mostly cover um, adding logos to videos um, and transcoding videos to different resolutions automatically. So this will be more um, in the management part of our dashboard. Um, we'll play around with that a little bit. So again, thank you for attending and hope to see you guys next time.